just for you to say that right like i i had this thought and this is not the same thing but i realized that a lot of us had this is gonna sound fucked up but part of it is some of us had to assimilate right we had to assimilate to survive which if you look back in the 1930s and 40s it was you know the perming of our hair right straightening out with those hot combs <laughs> learning how to survive and i think we don't see we don't see how we are right now as a as a society as like a black unit like some of us are making it right we're doing well but then you got the pookies in the radio it was like well you stop fucking please like how many more kids do you plan on having because those are my old tax dollars at work and i don't feel like we anybody's fucking kids so yeah i don't think we really fully <laughs> understand and honest i don't think we masculinity in your manhood because you have a and an XY chromosome it don't work that way women respect resources you can't check a bitch because you got nothing check you got nothing to check with the only place you dominate is in the bedroom dominate on the balance sheet dominate on your wallet which is your accomplishment any woman that you deal choose to deal with her money should be no good with you if you're 100% man. You pay everything. Hmm. Pookie and Ray Ray ain't hearing none of that. Pookie yeah. and Ray Ray like, look, man, I'm getting to bring back that car empty. You know what I'm saying? And mad at you because you ain't put gas in the car, drove all day. Like, you ain't telling Pookie and Ray Ray. They like, look, I need you to look, look out for me. I need the cereal from your mama house because I'm going to go to your mama house while I'm dating you and get my clothes washed and no commitment to you. Like, Buki and Ray, they savage. They don't give a damn. Boy, <laughs> they don't they give a damn, here. right? Yeah. Well, I, I think of it like this is right. Like, you you hear all these people kind of coming for him with this heat after he's passed on. And it's like, you only look at the man from one dimension, right? Like, he was hard on men and women. He was just a hard ass, right? Yeah. He was basically saying, be your best self. Like, stop giving yourself an excuse to be lazy. And I think in this video, you hear him saying, man, yeah, you think it's just about having an XY chromosome and a big dick. And it's like, no, where are your resources at? Where's your network at? Right? That shit matters too. Like you said, the balance sheet, which I'm assuming, VG, you need to go Google. Um, <laughs> it's okay. You can just. Uh, what the fuck? Up in the background. Just fight baby back. It's cool. Just ask Google. Um, a balance sheet is <laughs> yo no um no but seriously though, i think like when when you are a man and we know this right it takes a leader to raise other leaders when you expect you when you expect 100 percent out of yourself you expect it from the people that you mentor and what he's telling men and women is you got to be your best self stop leaning on a half-ass thing and be the best version of you and people don't want they don't want tough love they want soft love they want to hand me down. He was like, no, be a man, be a woman, own this shit. Man, I think the thing came in, right? Because he always talked about high value man, men. So I don't actually go against this message. Although you heard me a little bit. What I say is I think men need to give women all the equality they want. So if they want to go out there and work hard and make all the money, hey, baby, you can find 50-50. You can take me on the first date. You can do whatever you want to do if you want this equality. Because if you... If you want true equality, you're going to get it, not equity. So, but, but I do get where he's coming from, where, where he's talking about the high-value man, right? If you're claiming that you're a high-value man and you want a feminine, submissive, stay-at-home wife, yeah, you got to understand that those type of things got to happen. I think the word... I think his words get misconstrued because a lot of men want to conflate themselves into the high value man part and and miss the money, and when so like well I, well you you know I still should get this I still should get that and something else that drive me crazy a lot of these guys want, want, make forty thousand dollars want a stay at home wife and man I, even I don't get that right and we we talk about the men inside the league and the men inside the league. Make less than one hundred, and so it's nothing wrong with having well, a working wife. If you make, where is it you can live right now, making forty and feed a stay-at-home wife, and then maybe probably have kids too? Like, where can you live like that at? Uh, man, I don't know, and that's one thing that I don't get. So I, I, I think there needs to be a deviation. BG, we right? asking you that question. Where can you live at? 
<laughs> he would tell you, you his thing, girl work. On the, look, it's not <laughs> on the streets, though. I'll tell you that much. Let me tell you, I, I like that you chimed in. You, you do know a lot about mentoring. That man took a tour to Africa and brought a man back. He mentored. <laughs> That's what he did. <laughs> mentoring <laughs> out here. This guy here. <laughs> some men, some men are entitled and believe they deserve the best without having anything. Miss Joy said, "Subsidized housing. Yep, that is it. They do feel entitled, but also do I have female women." They feel they are are entitled to a man's money. That dude, you didn't have anything to say about Kevin Samuels. Man, the thing the thing I love about Kevin Samuels, and I, I think it, it's so funny how when when a person die, you you have a moment of reflection and you, and you yeah. go back and like some of the old stuff, and you're like, wow, and you know, and how how we came about was the fact that somebody he was had that video. I'm, I think past the life. I think I watched, first really got on to him when you used to. So on your couch and you used to watch him, he's like, yeah, this is the thing. I'm like, man, what this dude talking about? And he's like, oh yeah, you ugly, you know that, that, that. You know, and the whole the whole point was I don't like your paraphrasing. <laughs> <laughs> Why you, you feel ugly right you now? You know, woo woo, uh, you know, yeah, yeah, do woo, you know that's what it is. I got with you. I'm following. He don't know that language. You know, he bougie yeah, now. Yeah, but go yeah, ahead. You gotta move the tennis this way. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, nah, but the whole the whole point was is that until I understood and got to the meat and potatoes of who he was and, and what he represented, yeah. the message behind it, then I was able to kind of you know, move the naysayers aside because a lot of them didn't want to do the work. A lot of them didn't understand what he was bringing. They didn't understand. They didn't want to think like that. It's easy to to, to get all your information from IG and you you follow this couple and out couple goals and taking trips and you're doing all this other shit and it really don't mean nothing. You know yeah. what I'm saying? But really what he was saying, I guess for me as a man, hey, make sure that you dominate in some other areas. Make sure that you, you being that dude in 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 life and and in discipline and, and get going for what you want and then it'll be easy to attract the women that you want because they following you so man i hey nothing but respect so you know it's all good my way oh man any final thoughts on this one before we move on i'm not oh, man. I, I just i think i just think he was a hard ass and that's what we need bg hold i thought <laughs> yeah, but I want to go back to the thing that he said. It was like one part in there that was very, that was pivotal to me, right? Let me bring this back up. I did not mean to do that. I have no idea why I did that. Because I'm messing up here. So let's do this right here. Let's go. Here. Room. Dominate on the balance sheet. Dominate on your wallet, which is your accomplishment. Any woman that you deal choose to deal with. Her money should be no good with you if you're 100% man. You pay everything. Yeah, I want to go back to what he said. Dominate on the balance sheet. Dominate with which is your accomplishments, right? Yeah. Uh, we we talk about this all the time with men, and and we talk about men having vision and purpose. And I think let me extrapolate this out from what what he was saying. Women naturally are attached to a man that has a purpose. A woman's whole purpose is to birth something. A man has to put something in for her to birth it. That's natural construction of how the gods made it or how science made it. Or no matter how you see it, a man has to inject and she has to birth out. So when a man doesn't have anything to inject, which is his purpose, his goals, and his passion, she doesn't have anything to birth, which means that she doesn't have anything to really do, to latch on to. I've done that inside my personal marriage. I talk about this all the time. And even though I make good money, I was always looking at my wife and that caused strife inside our marriage. And I think a lot of men miss it, right? Because I said it in, I said it like two weeks ago, it's like driving a car. You can't be looking at the person on the passenger side or they're going to fear for their lives because they don't because they think that you don't know where you're going. That's dangerous. But as soon as you turn your head towards the windshield and start to drive, they feel comfortable. It's the same thing with women, right? Fellas, you cannot keep your eyes on the woman, even though that's the goal and the purpose of you going out making all this money to have a wife, to have a life, to have the women. But once again your focus cannot be on the woman it has to be on your goal and your purpose uh, there's a quote that came from a movie they said it said that uh you will never lose a woman chasing money but you'll lose money always chasing a woman i remember that yeah <laughs> yeah yeah that's actually it's quite true <laughs> which is quite true right 
And a lot of guys don't get that. We talk about the Pookies and the Ray Rays here. But what do you all what what do you all think about that? I think that those guys tend to date women who would be okay with them not having a purpose. Right? Because if you actually if you try to even approach a woman who won't look for a man of purpose, it's gonna just be about the sex for the time it's gonna be, and then that's gonna be it. Right? Like you like you said, there's nothing to inject there. There's no purpose, there's no foundation. It's just just good fucking overall. So <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm just being honest. Right, that's really what it is. Because as yeah. like that, like you said, outside of that, what else do you have to offer? Like, you're not offering her a vision. You're not offering a, you know, here's here's what we are gonna go as a couple. You know, have, having that having that for that foresight. What you're just offering is gratification. But eventually, just like with OnlyFans, you unsubscribe. So. <laughs> That's all I'm trying to say. Yeah, like it's, <laughs> yeah, they, 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 the, the kind of men who are dating those kind of women, they're not gonna go for a woman who has her shit together. They're not gonna go for a woman for that because they don't, they, they're boys, right? They're just taller boys. They're not grown men. They're just taller boys. Well, and that's the thing, right? They taller boys, but at the same time, they still shoot that shot. And I think yeah. the problem falls on because women want to judge every man according to these boys, right? That that be because they was low hanging fruit. For the because it was really no work, she, she could run the relationship. She can do what she want to, and she could enforce things on. And BGS talk about this all the time. He called it the gyno, the gynocracy here yeah. inside the black culture. And uh, I've been doing some reading on that, and that's really true. It's like the slave masters really went after the, the females. Uh, there and there he goes. <laughs> we were just talking about it. <laughs> <laughs> we were just talking about in BGS. I think we have too many links, but if you can stay around, well, let me drop the link for you, sir, and let's see. Can you come on on? Um, I, we kind of knew you was coming tonight. Yeah. So, but you know what? And through history, they went to the black woman yeah. and kind of forced out out in the forefront. And I actually even tried to make it to where she could subjugate the black man at the same time to actually raise their children. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, they would go have sex with the black women. And then th those black women would have to take those same mixed breed kids back to the man. And, and the man had to raise that wife. <clears throat> so, yeah. so, and that's the thing. So a lot of people don't get it. Just like this has been ingrained inside our culture, ingrained inside our whole being of being here in America. They don't just for you to say that, right? Like I, I had this thought, and this is not the same thing, but I realized that a lot of us had this is gonna sound fucked up, but part of it is some of us had to assimilate, right? We had to assimilate to survive, which if you look back in the 1930s and 40s, it was you know the perming of our hair, right? Straightening out with those hot combs, <laughs> learning how to survive. And I think we don't see we don't see how we are right now as a as a society, as like a black unit. Like some of us are making it right, we're doing well, but then you got the pookies in the radio. It was like, Well, you stop fucking, please. Like, how many more kids do you plan on having? Because those are my old tax dollars at work, and I don't feel like we anybody's fucking kids. So, yeah, I don't think we really <laughs> fully understand, to be honest, I don't think we fully understand that. But to your point, sir, yeah, I those dudes they'll shoot their shot, they'll get it temporarily. But the sad part is that you know, young fuck boys eventually just become old fuck boys. So you're talking about there's my on the panel right now, right? <laughs> <laughs> Look at him looking frowning up. So that dude, you Yo, we are don't, we don't we don't have any of those boys here, so I don't know who you referring to. You know, you know, you sound like a very long testimony right now. Say, Please what? don't bring up like his charge testimony right now. <laughs> don't bring up his charger. Well, you, you know yeah, the the Dodge Charger is the number one sign of the fuck boy. I don't know where. No. That's, that's some, that's <laughs> and challenges. Else. They're interchangeable. Hey man, they play with me. Yeah. Ooh, ooh, ooh. CC. You know what it is? That's what it is. You, what, the CC goes no, after no, the CC. No, no. Yeah, exactly. I was gonna say, you know, coochie, coochie control versus Charger and Challenger. Who wins on that? <laughs> <laughs> the Charger and the Challenger all day. <laughs> <laughs> it's not like look you know pastors use those words too like I, I i put this charge on you i i challenge you to be great they like let me go buy me a charge in the challenger because that's what pastor was talking about they had the whole message mixed up i challenge you to be great yeah my pastor said i need to buy me a challenger and he charged this message on me y'all don't know that we ain't talking about you that dude